be affirmative Don't mess with Mr. In-Between That's right Accentuate the positive North Stars hockey, take one. Here they come, here they come, they're playing. Come on, right, come on, relax, on. move the camera, left, left, left. Yes, sir. Bam. Hey, come on now, come on. Oh, what a save! Did you get it that I remember? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I'm All right, here. now, come on, come on, get number four here. Number four. Yeah, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, look out! Oh, yeah. Look out! Huh? Did you get the goal? I don't know. I, I, what do you mean you don't know? I saw it. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Order a pair of 9192 season tickets and we'll give you one more free. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Trauma centers specializing in treating critically ill or injured people are expensive to build and maintain. Until 1989, the state of Minnesota did not even have a level one trauma unit. This story is not a recreation. It's one night, May 14, 1990, at the Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis. You have to care about a human being to put yourself in blood from head to toe, vomitus, whatever else might be coming out of this person, all over your nice clean uniform that you just put on an hour ago, and brush it off as, well, just another part of the job. I'll go clean up, put on a clean uniform, and we'll go back at it again. Most people wouldn't do that. Minneapolis, 911. Somebody's hurt outside our house. What Somebody's happened, do you know? I don't know. What's your address there? 15th Avenue South. Do you know how they're hurt? I think somebody's stabbed. Please bring an ambulance. He's falling over. Please. All right, we'll get him out there. Thank you. Okay. Engine 5 are stabbing. Police are responding. 15th Avenue South. Possible suspect outside. Engine 5 on 15th. 9.37 p.m. Paramedic Jeff Frederick is dispatched to the scene. Knowing that this was a violent act, we try not to go into the scene without police escorting us in. Over there? If we are injured or killed before we can get to the patient, we've done them more harm than good. Yeah, that was the only other one here. You do No, I only brought one set. Here, should we come in here? Stay back, okay? Stay back. Uh, you took an arrow away. Okay. Four oh five and eleven. Tell the crew to bring mass trousers backward. We could find no blood pressure at all. Let's start positive pressure. Anybody with him when this happened? They, they just said they found him out here. Okay. What's your name? Peripheral pulse. Well, you can barely do it. Keep your hands in. Five steps. For our concern with the blood pressure so low that we couldn't measure it was that his heart would stop, that he would go into cardiac and respiratory arrest. We'd then have a real mess on our hands. Don't kill. Don't kill. Don't kill. Stay still, buddy. Take a deep breath. Also. Again. Okay, again. Deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Hold lay down. down, lay down. Lay down, you've got to stay laying down. You've been stabbed in the chest. You understand that? 21. You know I'd be a drug user? Oh, there's lots of tracks. Yeah, there's tracks everywhere. Uh, call and tell them we doubt we're going to have IV access, a lot of track marks. They're going to need a cut down as soon as we get there. Just a bare drip. The patient arrives at Hennepin County Medical Center within 10 minutes. No IV access. He's got track marks everywhere. Oh, we couldn't get an IV on either side. We didn't try for his neck yet. Looks like he's got a fairly decent external jugular on the right, but he's uh, 
stab in the left supraclavicular area. We haven't seen it move his feet recently. Oh, my name is looking for him. Hold your still, sir. Emergency medicine surgeon John Kaminsky examines the stab wound in the man's neck. They make me very nervous. They can be very deceiving. Uh, the patient looks like he has a very small wound that can kind of lull you into complacency. There are so many blood vessels and so many structures in the neck, and you need to be very aggressive and very cautious with these type of injuries. He needs a chest tube. Go ahead and start blood. We had to put a chest tube in his chest to drain the blood. All the blood was going into his chest. It was causing his lung to move over to the other side. I need this hooked up. Could we get 0.8 milligrams of Narcan here, please? Also around 9.30, another call comes in. Uh, yes, I'd like to report an accident. Okay, where at? On County 18 and Old Shock P Road. Is that by Dead Man's Curve, or? Yes, the real steep curve. It's right there on the curve. Any injury? I, it just happened. I didn't see it. Okay, well, send someone over. Okay, thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye. Three is four, four is 53. Police Sergeant Paul McCullough is the first to respond. I proceeded to the accident, which was on County Road 18 at the curve, Dead Man's Curve, we call it. And if drivers aren't paying attention, if they're unfamiliar, if they've been consuming alcohol, they're not ready for it. It was a bad accident. Heavy damage, total vehicles, and a woman who was seriously injured. The car was caved in probably three or four feet. The windshield was all cracked. The driver of the other vehicle had some signs of consuming alcohol. And during the conversation with him smelling the odor of alcohol, just kind of confirmed that that was a problem. If she had hit the windshield, it's a little more difficult for us as paramedics to treat that kind of an injury because we really can't do much for it in the field. That's one of those things where you've got to get them to the hospital and let the doctors handle it. 27-year-old Karen Bakke is semi-conscious when she arrives at the trauma center. Dr. Michelle Byrus examines her. Since she had head trauma, we had to also worry about an expanding lesion in her head that could be progressively worsening. Yeah, but she's real off and on, real somnolent. She'll fade in and out. Pretty messed up. When there are two cases going on at the same time, there is a little degree of nervousness that is generated. You start to worry a little bit that you might overlook one thing or another in the frenzy of activity that occurs. What's your name? Press your bag. You don't remember all what happened? The most useful thing we heard from the paramedics was the fact that she had several episodes of vomiting that suggested to us that her airway may need protection. It's a very emotional time. They're generally the sickest when they're in the emergency department, and there's a lot of things going on, and it's a very yeah, stressful experience. Yeah. We'll take that tube out as soon as we know that it's safe to do that. Okay, we're trying to do everything that's that's going to be um, important for your own best interest. Here, okay? I'm gonna gag. If they don't understand or are combative, you need to tell them that it has to be done for their own good. Okay, Take some slow deep breaths. Slow deep breaths. We'll take that out just as soon as we can. I can't fall. I can't breathe. Did she get the LFT added on? Across the room, the stabbing victim is being taken to get an angiogram. We needed to get a study looking at the blood vessels with dye to see which vessels were involved and where the bleeding was coming from. Karen is put under the care of neurosurgeon Doug Berkeley. Do you understand where we're taking it? No. We're going up to a special x-ray. A patient who is hit on the head can initially be awake and then all of a sudden deteriorate and be unconscious and then can die within a very short period of time. The person who was originally up and walking at the scene of an accident can be dead a few hours later. We uh, got the CAT scan because we were worried about her having bleeding within her brain, something that she would urgently need to go to the operating room for to evacuate that blood clot. 
Dr. Berglund talks to Karen's parents about her condition. I just want to kind of explain to you. Go ahead and have a chair. Um, she was in a car accident tonight, and they may have told you before, and she was un actually unconscious at the scene, so we were quite worried about her. We hardly spoke. Just trying to imagine what really happened. It's a scary thing. We'll keep her in the intensive care.